I am the development coordinator with Yafi Nene Lands and Resources. We are, uh, we are mandated by the seven Athabasca Basin communities up in the north here. And uh, just a little bit about myself, just quickly, I have a big presentation, so I'm gonna get, get through it as, as quick as possible for everyone here. Uh, so my name is Dene Cree Robillard. I am from both Black Lake First Nation and Cowes' First Nation down south. So, uh, best of both worlds, Denny and Cree. And uh, yeah, I've been with the company now for going on three years now. And uh, yeah, um, my main purpose, uh, I'll just speak to our office here just quickly here. Um, I'm just trying to get my notes here to, to, to correspond here as well. I'm not sure how I get my notes to, to correspond. Anyways, the mission of our office is to protect the lands and waters of the Athabasca Basin for the long-term benefit of our Dene First Nations and Athabasca communities. So that includes Black Lake First Nation, Hatchet Lake First Nation, uh, Fond du Lac First Nation, and then the four municipalities of Stony Rapids, Camsel Portage, Uranium City, and Wollaston Lake Coast. This is a little bit of our governance structure of how we're comprised. So as you see at the very bottom there is our staff and committees of the Yeti and Dene Lands and Resource Office. We are again mandated by the seven by basin communities, which you'll, you'll see kind of the little basic rundown on the structure here. So we have uh, our board of directors, Chris Toussaint, representing Fond du Lac, Mary Dana Chese, chair of Hatchet Lake, chairperson Archie Dezane, representing Black Lake, and Al Sain, representing all of the four municipality communities. And then we go up one more level, and those are the Athabasca Seven leadership. So the, the three First Nation chiefs and the one member representing the four municipalities, again, Al Saint, which uh, you'll see a little bit of the percent breakdown of, of how everything's broken down with the communities. So again, the, the main purpose, protecting land, promoting the interests of the people. So we have our offices broken into pretty much two, two departments, two huge departments. Um, we have the land side of things, which, which, which is comprised of consultation and, and engagement, planning and protection, and monitoring of the land and environmental stewardship. And then uh, the side that the department that I work mostly in is the people side of things. So that's all re relative to training, employment, and procurement, and as well as community development and working with education initiatives as well. Again, this is just a little bit of a rundown of the land side of things and the people side of things. So these are the representatives of uh, both respective departments. So we have the Athabasca Land Protection Committee comprised of the following names there. Uh, representatives, of, again, of all, one from each of the seven based in the communities and same with the people side too as well. This is the Athabasca Education, Employment and Development Committee. So the AEEBC. Kind of a, a little bit of a mouthful there, but this is the committee that I'm mostly, uh, mostly I do work with. And so, as you can see, there's there are my committee members broken down there who I work with closely, yeah, and our our, uh, our meeting works uh, uh, works uh, works together on anything related to insights to procurement and employment, education, and training initiatives. So we also have Anne Robillard, Hatchet Lake, Terry Lynn Beaver from Black Lake, Margaret Powder, representing again the, the, the permanent resident organization. We have Jerry Goulet also on our committee, who is the education director for the Athabasca Dene Suthene Education Authority. Joan Strong from PAGC, Christy Jackson from Athabasca Basin Development, and our new member to, the, to our committee, we're so happy to have is our youth representative from the Athabasca Basin, who is Jeanita Piquet, and she is from Fond du Lac. So a little bit of a brief history of how the ABC came to be. We, there was an economic strategic planning session that took place May 2018 in Waska Sioux and was attended by nearly 80 Basin representatives. So representatives included in this picture are, just to name a few, community members, youth, elders, commercial enterprise, community and local enterprise, as well as education, labor market, and training. 
and various levels of government. So that was a, a good snapshot. That was just, uh, I guess, a year before my time with, with Yassi Nene. So a report was prepared and uh, came out. Actually, I have it in front of me right here. Beautiful report. It, uh, it goes over the vision, basically, which, is, uh, which looks into a comprehensive and effective long-term regional education, training, and employment strategy that addresses all things related to issues that meet the needs of the Athabasca Basin region in the north. So the purpose and strategy of this report um, and, and of the whole session came to be regarding on how to strategy, strategize around assisting and building capacity within the Athabasca Basin for socioeconomic growth, to develop a skilled workforce that meets the needs of the employers in and outside the region, to improve the connection between employer needs and job opportunities for skilled Athabasca residents, and address the education gap from the K to 12 levels and post-secondary post levels. So great report and it's available. Uh, I have lots of copies of that report and um, I can share at, at, uh, at any time if need be. So I can add that as a resource to, to share with, uh, with anyone wanting to review that report. Uh, but one of the key recommendations that came from that report was the recommendation to develop a task force related to employment and training and education initiatives in the basin. So this task force was responsible to, uh, to implement all recommendations that came out of that report. So the AE3 planning committee continued to meet regularly after the event and, and followed uh, any recommendations coming out of that report, which in 2019, the task force and Yathi Nene, under the umbrella of Yathi Nene, met to discuss housing this new committee within and under Yathi Nene Land and Resources. So funding was obtained and uh, the development coordinator myself was hired. The new committee was then named the Athabasca Education, Employment and Development Committee. In terms of reference, the code of conduct was completed and sent to participating organizations. So as you can see, the Athenae plus the AE3 equals the AEDC. So again, the ADC works with regional partners through the through through this committee to leverage resources and identify opportunities. So we oversee agreements with industry, uh, including Chemical and Arano, and partners that commit to training, employment, and procurement. Uh, just to name a few of the initiatives that we were responsible for, and in partnership with various entities uh, and basin-owned. Uh, businesses and organizations was this diamond driller helper training. So th there's an annual diamond driller helper training that uh, that Yathi Nene helps and partners with. And currently we do work experience programs too as well. So 2018, 2019, there's 14 basic residents trained and employed, 11 currently working with a 70% retention rate. So just a little bit of a snapshot of some of our base and employees trained on the job and we're currently working with teams we had the 2J2 security guard training in 2020-2021, where 47 were total trained and certified through the Saskatchewan uh, security guard uh, training program. So 33 were employed as of November 1st, 2021, with 14 currently available for work. So as you can see, there's a little bit of a snapshot uh, in partnership with Joel Pedersen there, the uh, CEO and uh, director of the 2J2 security guard. And then we have this now related to education initiatives. We have this Regional Adult Essential Skills AES Pathways Program. So the intent of this program is to upgrade and kind of uh, more so upgrades our graduates, our grade 12 graduates from coming up from the basin to, uh, to upgrade their marks and their academics and, and to basically look into literacy uh, and all things literacy, which is reading, writing, math, sciences. And then, so this is the, the beginning, a pilot project basically, so that we could do that and then pathway them into an eventual technical university trade college program. So we'd like to see them through into their successful programs once they've upgraded their necessary grades in order to feel comfortable in, in, a, in a university or college institute setting. So uh, for this pilot project, we had eight students enrolled in this first of a kind program uh, was designed by Northlands College and SIT in partnership with Yathi mm -hmm. Nene and PAGC. So we're, we're looking forward to another successful program in the fall too. So 
stay tuned. Our office also administers a Athabasca, the Athabasca Basin Scholarship uh, Program, which uh, also just recently incorporated the inaugural Denise Boogie Trade Scholarship Program. So now we have the, the, the Wide Scope Basin Program, but incorporated in that is also a trades component. So this past year, our 2021 recipients of the inaugural Denise Boogie Trade Scholarship Program was Richie Robillard from Black Lake, for his aircraft maintenance engineering program and Raiden Josie Union from Hatchet Lake in his carpentry program. So congratulations to those two inaugural recipients of the program. Overall, there were 26 at the Basket Basin scholarship recipients this past year, each receiving a total of $2,500. And so this program is put on by our office and administered through our office and a deadline for scholarships uh, and July 31st. So if you're interested, please visit our website for more information on the scholarship program. Also another component was uh, in partnership with our office and Prince Albert Grand Council and at the Basket Basin Development was their summer student program. Whereas there was a total of 11 students hired through ABD from the Athabasca Basin for this first ever student program. So currently there's their ABD is running this program again, and there are hires within several of ABD's investment uh, uh, companies. And so very successful student uh, summer student program. Uh, this leads us to the Athenian Export Database. I'm running short of time, sorry. Uh, Export Database is a relatively new, uh, relatively new, uh, component to our office in partnership with our corporate partners, Cameco and Arano. So the export database is a job search tool, which uh, houses the skills inventory of all, everything related to the Athabasca Basin. So it, uh, we maximize on training, employment, and procurement opportunities. This uh, export database is actually Canada-wide. And we bought a license through the export database to house a basin-only database, whereas nobody outside the basin can... Uh, really dive in and, and, and search for employment. So the database is basin only where uh, basin residents can look for jobs in and around the Athabasca Basin. And this tool is accessible from any platform, basically your computer, your laptop, um, smartphone, iPad, whereas you build and store your resume and you can manage and update your profile basically. And indeed, if you're familiar with Indeed Jobs, that's basically what this platform does, but it's a basin only platform. Whereas, yeah, again, residents can look for jobs within the basin, but also extend outside the basin as well. And uh, they can receive job notifications, any training notifications related to their resume. And it's, it's a skills inventory database. And it's, again, accessible through any platforms like your iPhone, iPad, laptop. So if you're from the basin, please feel free to, uh, to take a look and learn more about uh, the export database. Yeah, we're in a soft rollout at this time, and uh, we're currently, for basin members, where we have, I believe, 80 plus profiles, where our end goal right now at this, for this first year is to reach 250 export database basin profiles. And so once we reach that, we're, we're going to be drawing names of all 250 residents and uh, for big prizes, big TVs, PS5s, um, gallons of gas, you know, anything that's, uh, that's relevant to the base and we're, we're, want, we're wanting to uh, do a big draw of prizes to, for a successful uh, export database rollout. So again, yeah, storing your tickets as well, as easy as, easy as a click of a button too as well. So if you have your women's first aid, anything, chainsaw safety, gun safety, all those certifications can be uh, safely stored and housed on your export profile. Uh, so if you want to take a moment, actually, if you, uh, for those that are uh, attending, you can very well just take a peek and use your QR code right here. This will lead you right to the export database on our, on our Yathi Nene website. If you want to take a further look, um, even join just to, if you're from the basin um, and take a peek and navigate. Uh, so I'll leave that up and also share this presentation with Kara too as well to extend to, uh, to everyone else. And I understand this is also recorded. So this uh, QR code is accessible on, on, I believe, KCDA's website. Uh, but there are benefits to the communities and members, again, for training, job, and business contracts, all posted on Export Database. So. 
Uh, that's basically my time there. I'm four minutes over there. I apologize again, but uh, if you uh, have any questions, comments, any kind of queries, please feel free to uh, reach out to our office and or join our Facebook page for uh, daily updates and visit our YFT name page, please, as well, in, in our export database. And uh, that's basically uh, my time with everyone here. Merci and thank you.